So you mentioned that if you're trying basically to talk to everybody and to sell your services to everybody, really it's not going to be interesting to anyone at all. Kind of curious how you got your start in digital marketing and what specifically it was that inspired you to focus on, you know, marketing for consultants as opposed to, you know, any of the, the other hundreds of, of thousands of categories out there, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, start, I started digital marketing. Um, I started teaching myself in university. I was actually studying history. I was planning to go to law school, but something about school just didn't sit right with me. Uh, I knew I always wanted to work for myself. And when I heard that people were making a living from their computer, as soon as I heard that, I must have been around 19, and I was like, oh, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to work wherever I want, whenever I want, from the comfort of my home. And how I got there was immaterial. So I just started looking for skills to learn that I could use to start freelancing. Uh, I started self-teaching myself web design, SEO, and copywriting. And I just began pitching, pro pitching projects on uh, Upwork at the time. Um, but the problem that I ran into was that it was so difficult to stand out from the millions of other web designers from across the world. So I started researching how, how could I stand out from all of my competition uh, and win more, more gigs and increase my prices and, be, and become an authority in, in web design and copywriting and SEO. And one of the common threads I found was this idea of niching down, specialization, positioning, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I, I, would, I, would, I read the work of Philip Morgan, David C. Baker, and I agreed with it in theory that if you become known as the web designer for consultants or the web designer for gyms or the skill for industry, that makes it so much easier to stand out because you're being specific. Uh, and then I kind of thought about who I worked with, who I enjoyed working with, who had the, the money to afford what I provided, who had the lack of skills um, where I could come in and provide them with those skills and get them results. Uh, and, the, and it was consultants. And I had only worked with about two or three of them, but they were very easy to sell. Uh, they had problems that I could solve. And I was always attracted to the idea of making a living using your brain. Uh, that's something that, that always resonated with me, even as a, as a high school student. So I decided, hey, what do I have to lose? I'm 24, 25, I'm just going to be known as the websites for a consultants guy. If it doesn't work, then I'll switch niches. But if I want to stand out, I have to take some sort of risk uh, by, by being specific. And um, yeah, since then, I've really only worked on consulting websites, uh, have written a lot about them, have, uh, I, do, I run my own consulting website. And uh, it's, it's been quite the journey, specializing, specializing, specializing for consulting websites, but it's, it's made everything so much more enjoyable um, in terms of running my own business. What are the kind of key elements or, or the main things that they ought to focus on when kind of creating their own website? Positioning is, is key. Um, without positioning, it's very hard to actually write a consulting website, design it, and market it. So when you do, when you do start this, it, it helps to start with positioning. And by positioning, I think a good formula is just pick an industry to specialize in. You know, I do websites for consultants, copywriting for, for gyms. Uh, but positioning is like the foundation. Without good positioning, if you're a generalist, it's going to be hard to make your consulting website work. So get the positioning dialed in. Um, think about your past clients, who you like to serve, uh, what industry can actually afford your services, what industry has the problems that your expertise can solve. Um, get that positioning right, and then the rest will become much, much easier. So you mentioned that if you're trying basically to talk to everybody and to sell your services to everybody, really it's not going to be interesting to anyone at all. But for somebody who might be struggling and saying, you know, well, my service truly is useful to everybody. And I don't, I don't want to exclude people from this, this amazing service that I offer. What would you say to somebody like that? And how would you kind of navigate that? Because I think 
oftentimes there are a lot of, you know, mindset or, or mental obstacles that kind of stand in the way of getting to that specialized positioning. Yeah, it's, um, I think there's many different ways to make the case for it. But one really practical thing that I do is someone will say that to me, uh, and then I'll bring up a tool like Ahrefs and I'll, and I'll show them the data for the phrase web is web design. How many people are searching for web design and what's the competition around the phrase web design? They say, I'm a web designer. I can serve everybody. I want to rank for web design. I show them the stats. The difficulty score is 94 out of 100. It would take 300 backlinks to rank on the first page for web design. Um, it's basically unachievable unless you have a billion dollar marketing budget. And I show them web design for law firms. That's that's a niche that they, they're kind of toying around with. Okay. Um, I show them the volume around web design for law firms. And the volume might not be as high, but the keyword difficulty is, is, is 9 out of, of 100. So it's actually realistic that you can rank your website for web design for law firms. And that's kind of a microcosm of, of, of positioning. It's just it's too hard to stand out. Um, when you're a generalist, but when you do specialize, you can actually stand out. And I'm assuming people want to rank their website and, and become visible and become authorities. Um, and they want to do that qu quickly rather than take it taking decades. And the only way to really shortcut that process is by shrinking your ideal client, shrinking who you serve, uh, because then you, you can observe more patterns. You can, you can do the same thing over and over and repetition breeds, breeds mastery. So I think that exercise of showing them the data is a good sort of, um, it encapsulates why you should position because there's less competition and there's a faster way to becoming an expert because there's less competition. So that's, that's an exercise that I do with people. And it's that, that's, to me, that's been the most effective is showing them those numbers. Right. Compare and contrast. So let's say I'm a, you know, a, you know, let's say I'm a brand strategist, right? Um, <laughs> wonder where I got that idea from. Um, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, I, I can't just be a brand strategist to, to just anybody. Um, maybe I should consider being a brand strategist to, to law firms because Savo has shown me, you know, exactly the, the exact numbers. You know, it's clearly a lot easier to stand out as a brand strategist for law firms. But the the problem is that I've only got, you know, maybe one uh, case study from a, a law firm client is, is that an obstacle does is that something that you need to worry about having that kind of prerequisite uh, experience and, and having already worked with people in that vertical or can you kind of back into it and once you validated the positioning then start to build the expertise and credibility in the area yeah, you can absolutely back into it. That's what I did. I only worked with one or two consultants, but I'm like, I'm going to plant my flag in the ground and I'm going to become an expert by, uh, well, first of all, like just by positioning alone and having a really tight statement, people are going to be attracted to that. And then over time, you use your website to support your positioning uh, because positioning has to be has to be proved with, with, with thought leadership, case studies, testimonials, blog articles. So once you put that flag in the ground, you use your website to support your positioning by, by creating content. So if your positioning is like your thesis, your website helps support that thesis, providing evidence that, it, that it's true. So it, 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 even if you have zero case studies or testimonials, um, I think about expertise as a, uh, not just what you've already done, but what, what you seek to become. Uh, because you, you can become an expert by, by writing and thinking about something um, over and over again. Of course, it helps to already have worked with clients of a particular industry and have case studies. But if you have one or two and you like working with them, um, at some point you have to put that flag in the ground and, and actually test it out in the real world. So, yeah, you absolutely can back into it and um, just just gradually become an expert over time by, by doing the work of, of content marketing and working uh, with people in that industry. 